Date, August 3, 1938. Place, New York and aboard the SS Normandy. Weather, hot, no doubt. Today has been a dream and more. We departed our hotel for the Normandy at 9.30 a.m. There it was, waiting for passengers and appearing even larger than it had yesterday. After passing through ticket and passport examination, Margie and I walked up the long gangplank, passing by rows of red-capped bellhops who were standing at attention until we were finally on board. The ship was so vast that one moment we wandered around happily and the next we were hopelessly lost. We just giggled, twirled around, and darted off in another direction. The temperature in New York today was heading for 96 degrees, and we nearly perished. We were not dressed for such hot weather because our destination is Europe, where it will be cooler. Friends and relatives who came to see us off were allowed to visit us on the ship. We had been dashing around so much they had a hard time finding us. It was such fun chatting with them while taking in the wonders of our new surroundings. A few passengers were whispering that movie actress Simone Simone was on board, as well as Kitty Carlisle and financier Bernard Baruch. Before too long, it was necessary for our guests to leave the ship. The SS Normandy dramatically pulled away with all the flurry of a moving picture type departure. Gigantic whistles were blowing and screeching, accompanied by wild hand wavings between ship and shore. We about fainted from the heat while standing at the ship railing in the sunshine. Margie and I chose to sail tourist class on this ship, which is well known for being predominantly a luxury liner. Just imagine our happiness when we found ourselves in the interchangeable quarters. The cabins in our section of the ship are used for first class on some trips and for tourists on others. Our cabin is gorgeous. We have two grand beds with a long-haired white rug between them and two wash basins, if you please. There is a dressing table, two bureaus, and little twin bedside tables. It really is magnificent. We have separate mirror-lined wardrobes, and there is a nook just for our suitcases. In addition to a writing desk with chair, there is a lovely comfy chair. We were tickled by the private bathroom with a wash basin, toilet, and the cutest shower I have ever seen. It comes out from the sides and caresses you, making it difficult to tear yourself away. There is an extra wash basin enclosed in a door so that if one person is in the bathroom, the other can use that basin. Our room is softly fragranced with the most colorful flowers. Mother and Dad sent a vase of tall gladioli, spikes, which I will have transported to our dining room table. There are pink roses and white asters from Uncle Paul. 
I am wearing the prettiest gardenia corsage, which will be stored in our refrigerator overnight. Telegrams arrived by the dozens. We are just crazy with excitement. The afternoon on the Normandy just flew by. We have been assigned dining room seating at a table for four near a porthole. Dinner is served for the second sitting at 8.30 p.m. Our dining companions turned out to be a couple of well-seasoned male travelers who tell us they are doctors from New York City. Hi and Bernie often adopt a blasé attitude, but then again, they can act crazy and be lots of fun. After tonight's feast, the four of us strolled on the deck and gazed at the reflection of the moon on the ocean. It's early to bed, 12.30 a.m., for a big day tomorrow. Date, August 4th, 1938. Place, on board the Normandy. Weather, a little cooler, but still hot. When the alarm went off at 8 a.m. this morning, it felt like it should be the middle of the night. Noticing that clocks had advanced an entire half hour overnight, I made a mad scramble for breakfast. The clocks are advanced to compensate for the time changes as we make our way to Europe. Right after breakfast, I went with our two doctors on a tour of the ship. Hi presented me with a rose from the dining room, and they were both acting crazy as usual. Bernie now tells me that he is a veterinarian, but I can't believe a thing they say. They are so silly. The first class area certainly is spacious and grand, and the dining room is lovely beyond description. The walls and chandeliers sparkle with brilliant glass. I am told that this room holds well over 500 diners, and that the chandelier glass was made by Lalique. The conservatory is an amazing place, with wild and cultivated flowers, fountains, and real birds. I certainly never expected to hear birds chirping on a ship. The walls are adorned with murals, which are painted on canvas, glass, and wood. I could just sit there forever and ever. I tiptoed into the Darling Chapel where they hold church services on Sunday. All of the wood carvings in this chapel were created by blind people. Such intricate and beautiful work. In the afternoon, we, by very special permission, were allowed to see the engines. Hi and Bernie helped me coax the purser because women are not supposed to go into the engine room. The only stipulation was that I wear slacks or shorts. Margie wanted to take a nap, so I borrowed a pair of her shorts, which turned out to be very short on me. The expanse of legs that I displayed caused more attention than I would have wished. Well, back to the tour. The engine rooms are mammoth and appear as clean as any salon. It surely was hot down there, but we were so happy that we had the opportunity to see it all. After locating Margie, we went on deck to watch the fellows shoot at clay pigeons. 
It seems that we do nothing more than eat and get ready to eat. For such a large ship as the Normandy, social life is not at all organized. There are no planned activities to help you become acquainted with the other passengers. You have to make your own friends and plan your own entertainment. The only people you meet on a regular basis are those who sit at your dining table and next to your assigned deck chair. Our deck chairs overlook the swimming pool so we have a grand view of everything. The deck steward was most gracious in assigning them to us, but we do not have the opportunity to spend as much time in them as we would like. There are plenty of things to do all day long, including attending concerts, which we especially love. One can swim in the pool, go to movies, dance, and participate in all sorts of deck sports. Date, August 5th, 1938. We can dine anywhere we choose in the morning. At breakfast, we chatted with a lovely couple. The husband was such an Adonis of a man, however... He still cannot compete with the handsome purser's assistant whose dreamy blue eyes have me completely subjected. This was such a lazy morning that it was difficult to summon ambition to do anything more than swim in the outdoor pool. The temperature was swell as long as you stayed in the water. Hi and Bernie reacted like two big sissies when I invited them to join me for a swim. They said they preferred to sit and watch me swim. After lunch, we went on deck and fooled around, laughing and finding out more about each other. We played questions and answers. At 4.30, the four of us went to the movies to see Joan Blondell and Melvin Douglas in the hilarious film, There's Always a Woman. Then it was time to dress for dinner, which takes us at least an hour. After dining, we moved up on deck for some conversation and dancing. I had one dance with High, and then I became extremely distressed when Bernie could not dance. He said that he had been sick. Margie and I were out gallivanting somewhere, so I was stuck sitting with Bernie. It won't be that way tomorrow night, because I so love to dance. I will try to subtly drift away from Bernie and seek out a dance partner. The theater is like a real little playhouse, seating 380 people. The walls are delicately patterned with silver leaf. The stage curtain looks like velvet, except that it shimmers. Date, August 6, 1938. Place on board the Normandy. Weather, foggy and warmer. Before the sun came up this morning, we awoke suddenly when the ship seemed to lurch to a stop. Frightened to death, we rushed out into the hallway and heard a man say that ships naturally slow down for foggy conditions. It was then difficult to calm down, so we slept in and enjoyed breakfast in bed. We had stayed up until 2 a.m. this morning. What hours one keeps on a ship? To work up an appetite, we went swimming before lunch. Our attempt to play a little shuffleboard ended in frustration and waves of laughter. I could not even make the markers go all the way. We will leave that sport to someone else. By the way, the purser is getting so he recognizes me. 
This morning, he smiled and nicely said, Good morning. However, it is his assistant, a handsome-looking brute, who causes my heart to flutter. Test pilot was the afternoon movie today. Tonight we attended a party and, oh, what a party! The chefs prepared an extra special dinner with an exquisitely decorated cake. This delightful meal was followed by entertainment and dancing in the salon. It was a crazy swell time and everyone was rip-roaring. High and Bernie are becoming irrepressible. We were with them most of the evening, although we danced with others as well. Date, August 7th, 1938. Place on board the Normandy. Weather, coolish. After arising at 8 a.m., I dashed off a letter before breakfast. I suspect that many passengers were resting up from the big party last evening, as there were very few people eating breakfast. Since it was quite early, I settled down amongst the orchids in the tranquil conservatory and wrote my letters to the tune of warbling birds. I strolled into first class to find the chapel and attended a church service at 11 a.m. The sermon was lovely, However, the minister seemed a bit too informal for such a breathtaking setting. After rooting Margie out of bed, we spent the remainder of the day lounging on the deck, attending movies, and packing. We engaged in a frenzy of picture-taking, so we will be leaving the SS Normandy before too long. Because tonight is our last night on the ship, we were told to have our suitcases packed and ready to be removed from the cabin by 6 p.m. All we could keep to ourselves was one small bag. I asked the purser, he actually called me by name, and his beautiful assistant to sign their autographs on this diary. My heart still has not returned to normal. We had another grand dinner tonight, our last dinner on the Normandy. It is early to bed tonight and up early in the morning for the sunrise and debarkation at Southampton, England. Whoopee! Date, August 8, 1938. Weather is grand. It will be difficult to squeeze all the details of this day into the diary, Nearly everyone was roused out of bed at some unearthly hour this morning, but our kind stewardess let us sleep until 6 a.m. The Normandy docked at Southampton so early we did not get out on deck in time to see the approaching shoreline. The landing was perfect, with grand sunlight and beautiful clouds. This is not the customary weather, according to one Englishman. After a hurried dressing and last-minute packing, we dashed off to our final breakfast on the Normandy. Our fellow passengers looked so different in their landing clothes. The stewards were all on deck to wish us a lovely trip. We gave them their tips, took some last-minute pictures, and said our fond goodbyes. The RMS Queen Mary actually docks at this location. However, the SS Normandy, being a French ship, places departing passengers on a tender that takes them to shore. After a brief wait, we embarked on the tender, Grove Field, for the two-hour trip to Southampton. The end.